hello everyone uh, so we had a full pack first day and i hope you enjoyed and learned a lot and there is a lot of homework to do as well and now uh, we will finish with a very interesting talk uh, by professor sharayu moharir and uh, we have uh, the chair of this session is uh, professor avishek chatterjee from iit madras professor avishek chatterjee did a phd from uh, university of texas in, uh, at austin and uh, he was a postdoc at the university of illinois at urbana champaign uh, his interest uh, uh, lies in the mathematical study of statistics networks and uh, information systems with applications in social networks crowdsourcing systems communications both classical and quantum networks and uh, noisy computation so uh, i thank uh, uh, abhishek uh, for sharing this session um, please i over to you thank you hi thanks satyajit uh, for this uh, wonderful organization of this event uh, it's very educational for all of us and i'm very happy to be here to share the session and and it's a great pleasure to introduce sharyu uh, mohari from iit bombay so sharyu mohari is a associate professor at iit bombay she did her phd in um, electrical and computer engineering from the university of texas at austin in 2014 and her btech and mtech from iit bombay in 2009 her research interests are modeling and the design of scalable resource allocation algorithms and shadu today will speak about leveraging uh, leveraging edge resources for service hosting so you're all eager to hear her shadu over to you thanks abhishek and thank you to the organizers for inviting me to give this talk uh, abhishek please feel free to interrupt me at any time i hope my screen is visible and you're able to hear me ah uh, yes it's very clear okay so i'll start um this is joint work with uh, nik uh, lakshmi shripakash and mohit who are students at graduate students at iit bombay and nikhil karamchandani is my colleague in the department of electrical engineering at iit bombay the software as a service instances also known as saas for short Uh, like social networking platforms online shopping platforms navigation apps have had a huge impact on our lives in recent times and they continue to grow in popularity to the point that they've become ubiquitous this phenomenon has in part been fueled by cloud computing which allows service developers to use computational and storage resources in the cloud to serve their customers now even though the computational resources in the cloud are almost unparalleled in their processing power serving requests via the cloud increases latency and this is primarily due to the time required to transfer data from the users to the cloud and from the cloud back to the users and this latency often leads to a deterioration in the quality of service or the quality of experience of these users one possible solution to this which has emerged in the last few years is edge computing which refers to serving user requests using storage and computational resources at the edge of the network that is close to the end users broadly speaking the edge can actually be defined as any point between the users and the cloud and we in this piece of work say that a service is hosted at the edge if the code data libraries and anything else that is required to serve user requests is stored on the edge server once all of this is stored on the edge server and there is computational capacity at the edge answers to user queries can then be computed at the edge and therefore user queries actually never go to the cloud to get served which reduces latency specifically in this work we consider the setting where the service provider or the service developer does not own third part uh, edge resources but there are third party edge resources that can be rented via short term contracts by use for use by these uh, service providers so we consider a time slotted system with a batch of requests arriving in each slot 
um, due to the limitations on the computing capacity at the edge, there is an upper limit on the number of requests that can be served at the edge in a slot. Further, we consider three types of costs. The first that I mentioned already, which is the service cost, which can also be called the latency cost incurred by the system. This is the cost the system pays for the delay in serving in its customers. So since requests served at the edge will have low latency, given the proximity of the edge server to the user, we fix the latency cost for requests served at the edge to zero. And the latency cost for requests served by the cloud is set to one unit. This is just a normalization. You could use different numbers. So edge service zero cost, cloud service one unit cost. Further, a renting cost is incurred to host the service on the edge server. In our setting, this cost is determined by the third party edge resource provider. This is the service provider which owns this edge resource. And we allow this third party resource provider to uh, potentially quote different costs at different times. So what that does is, although we study this problem for the, from the perspective of a specific application provider, the effect of the presence of other application providers who might be simultaneously interested in using these edge resources is captured through the time varying nature of the rent cost. So more specifically, the third party edge resource provider can periodically revise the cost of renting edge resources based on the current demand for these edge resources. So these are the first two costs, the service cost and the rent cost. The third cost is the fetch cost. Now our setting allows dynamic hosting. That is the hosting policy is allowed to change its hosting decision over time. So for example, there could be a time where the service is not hosted at the edge and the hosting policy decides that it now wants to host the service at the edge. Now to do this, the database, the code, and everything else corresponding to the service will have to be fetched from the cloud to host at the edge. Each such fetch leads to a communication overhead on the system because a big chunk of data has to be fetched from the cloud to host on the uh, edge. So each, on each such fetch, the system incurs what we call a fetch cost. The algorithmic challenge is to design a hosting policy. Now, what does this hosting policy do? This hosting policy decides when to host the service on the edge and when to evict it from the edge. And the goal of the policy is to minimize the total cost of service, which is the sum of the latency cost, the rent cost, and the fetch cost. Uh, the hosting decision can be changed from time slot to time slot based on various parameters. The service hosting policy knows the rent cost before it makes the hosting decision for the next time slot. It knows the cost of fetching the service from the cloud to the edge. And it also knows the edge service constraint, which is how many requests can the edge serve simultaneously in a time slot. And we say that such a hosting policy is online because it observes the request arrival process causally. That is. At a time to make its hosting decision, it only knows the arrival process up to that time and does not have any explicit knowledge of future arrivals. Before I go into the details, I'll walk you through the main contributions of the first part of this talk. We propose an online hosting policy. We call this policy retro renting. And we characterize its performance both in terms of computation and storage uh, complexity, as well as how much cost this policy incurs. We look at some other natural candidate policies like the time to live policy and characterize its performance as well. And in addition to this, we characterize the fundamental limits on the performance of any online deterministic policy for this setting. In addition, uh, we also evaluate the performance of our policies using trace data obtained from Amazon and Google data sets. And this just gives us a sort of a good data set to compare the performance of our policy with other policies that are suitable for this problem. Now, with this overview, I'll go into the details of our work. To make things more concrete, 
the following sequence of events occur in each time slot. We first have request arrivals. The requests are then served either at the edge or at the cloud. Following this, the rent cost for the next time slot is revealed by the third party edge service provider. And finally, the system makes a decision, a hosting decision for the next time slot. This hosting decision could be to fetch the service, to evict the service if it's already hosted, or to make no change should, to the hosting status. I'll walk you through our dynamic hosting policy. We call our policy retro renting or RR for short. RR decides, I mean, the thing it's trying to decide is when to host the service at the edge. And it does this in each time slot in the following manner. It evaluates if the current cache status is optimal in hindsight. Using the knowledge of the entire arrival and rent cost sequence up to this point, and if it finds that the current cache hosting status is not optimal, the state is changed. I'll make this more precise. So let's say here is where we are right now. It's currently time slot T. The service is not hosted at the edge in time slot T. And T evict was the last time this service was hosted at the edge. So if you see the uh, red thick line on the left hand side, that indicates that the service was hosted at the edge in these time slots. Okay, So at T evict, uh, the RR policy decided to evict the service from the cache. And since then, it has not been hosted up to time T. Okay, And we're going to call this option A. This is the current status of the edge server under the RR policy. Now, what RR does is it looks for a time slot tau such that between T evict and tau, the service is not hosted at the edge. In time slot tau, the service is fetched and hosted at the edge, and it is not evicted till the current time slot T. Recall that the red thick portion of the time axis indicates that the service is hosted at the edge in this duration. Now, this is option B. Now, what RR does is it tries to see if there exists a value of tau which is between T evict and T such that option B is cheaper than option A. And when I say cheaper, I mean that the total cost incurred under option incurred under option B is less than the total cost incurred under option A. If there exists such a tau, what RR does is it fetches the service in time slot T. If there is no such tau for which option B is cheaper, RR maintains status quo and does not change the state of the cache. I hope this is clear. If not, there is a parallel example for the other case where the service is fetched at time T fetch and not evicted till the current time T under RR. So this is option A. RR checks if there is a time slot tau between T fetch and T such that evicting the service before time slot tau begins and not bringing it back up to time slot T is cheaper. So this is option B. If there exists a time slot tau such that option B is cheaper than option A, then RR changes the status of the, uh, it changes the hosting status. More specifically, it fetches the service, uh, sorry, it evicts the service at time slot T. If there is no such tau, then RR makes no change to the cache status and the service remains hosted at the cache. So this is how the RR policy works. Based on the explanation of our policy I just went over, it might appear like the complexity of the policy could scale with time. Uh, which would make it infeasible for implementation since the entire arrival and rent cost sequence may have to be stored and, to determine which policy is optimal in hindsight. So while this is indeed true, if we implement the policy in a naive way, there is a way to reduce the storage and computational complexity of this policy to order one to make sure that it does not scale with time using a technique that is proposed in the a reference given in the footnote. 
um, since I'm a little short on time, I'll not go into the details. But it suffices to show uh, or state that the amount of information needed to implement this this version of the RR policy is a constant, which does not increase with time. We, all we need to do is maintain a scalar, which is indicated by delta on this slide. And to keep track of delta, we need the knowledge of the fetch cost, the current rent cost, and the number of request arrivals in the current time slot. And this is a very simple linear computation with a max and a min that one has to make to update the value of delta over time. So to summarize, RR can actually be implemented with uh, both storage and computational complexity that does not scale with time. I'll now present the first result for our policy. This theorem characterizes the performance of RR, which is our policy, by giving a worst case guarantee on the performance of RR relative to that of the offline optimal policy. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this terminology, the offline optimal policy knows the entire arrival and rent cost sequence a priori and uses this knowledge to make hosting decisions. Now, we say that this is a worst case guarantee on the performance of RR because this bound in the theorem holds for all request and all rent cost sequences. Now, I'll walk you through the details of this theorem. Let the service fetch cost be denoted by M. The edge server can serve at most kappa requests in a time slot. C min is a lower limit on the rent cost. Um, I'll urge you to remember these two parameters, M and kappa, because they're going to be important moving forward. So M is the fetch cost. Kappa is the maximum number of requests that can be served at the edge in a time slot. And CRR and COPT indicate the costs incurred by the RR policy and the offline optimal policy, respectively. Now, what this theorem tells us is there exists an upper bound on the ratio of the total cost incurred under RR and the total cost incurred under the offline optimal policy for any request arrival and rent cost sequence. And the takeaway from this theorem is that there is a performance, this performance guarantee improves as the fetch cost M increases and deteriorates as the edge service constraint kappa increases. Okay. To summarize, there exists an upper bound on the ratio of the cost incurred by RR and the cost incurred by the offline optimal policy. This upper bound increases as M, uh, decreases as M increases and increases as kappa increases. The proof of this result leverages the fact that RR mimics the offline optimal policy with a delay and uh, uses this to bound the cost incurred by RR and then comes up with a bound on the ratio. I'll go over the proof details in the next few slides. So this is just an overview. I don't have, I, I don't want to go over the proof uh, details, but the basic idea is to partition time into frames such that a new frame begins on each fetch by the offline optimal policy. Here we have a frame where the downward black arrow indicates that under opt there was a service fetch. Now note that obviously between two service fetches opt has to evict the service from the edge at some point. So we have a downward arrow, which is a fetch, an upward arrow, which is an eviction, and a downward arrow, which is a fetch again. All of these are about the offline optimal policy. Now, the first thing we show is that RR fetches and evicts exactly once in a frame. And more specifically, RR fetches before opt evicts and RR evicts after opt evicts. So any frame has this particular structure that the first thing we have is a fetch by opt. Following this, we have a fetch by RR. Following that, we have an evict by opt, following which there is an evict by RR, and then the frame ends. And the frame ends just before opt fetches the service again. 
one way to interpret this frame structure is to conclude that rr is actually mimicking the offline optimal policy with a delay and this is not entirely surprising given how rr works because rr looks backwards and sort of corrects itself if it feels like it's made the wrong decision so what we do next is further divide the frame into four sub frames as shown here in the first sub frame opt hosts the service at the edge but rr doesn't in the second sub frame both rr and opt host the service at the edge in the third sub frame rr hosts the service at the edge but opt doesn't and in the fourth sub frame neither hosts the service at the edge it follows that the cost incurred in the first and the third sub frames is equal under the two policies so we use all these structural policies of each frame to bound the cost incurred by rr as a function of the cost incurred under opt for a particular frame and then we stitch these results across frames together to get the result we desire i hope this gave you some insight into how we proved the performance of rr now i'll go back to the theorem just to summarize our insights so we have that the performance guarantee improves as the fetch cost m increases now that we've seen the proof outline intuitively this result can be explained as follows as m increases each service fetch becomes more and more expensive and therefore opt will likely not fetch very often it will either fetch and stay put or not fetch at all that is it will sort of tend towards a static hosting pattern and since rr mimics opt with a delay the fraction of time in which the hosting status under rr is different from the hosting status under opt will decrease as m increases and this reduces the gap in the performance between the two policies secondly the performance gap increases linearly with the edge service constraint kappa recall that kappa was the upper limit on the number of requests that can be served at the edge in a time slot note that as kappa increases the edge server becomes more and more powerful and this result seems to suggest that opt is able to exploit this more powerful edge server more efficiently than rr and therefore the gap between their performances is increasing as kappa increases and a natural question at this point is to sort of enquire if this is a limitation of only rr or would any online policy suffer the same consequences and our next result answers this question so this result characterizes the fundamental limit on the performance of any deterministic online policy so here by cp script p we denote the cost incurred by the online policy p this result shows a lower limit on the gap between the performance of the offline optimal policy which knows the entire arrival sequence a priori and any deterministic policy which has access to the arrival and rent sequences in a causal manner and the takeaway here is that the performance guarantee for any policy weakens linearly with the edge service constraint kappa i'm going to skip the proof details for this result and instead just provide a very quick intuition so the idea here is since the policies we consider are deterministic we can predict how they behave for an input sequence and the idea the key step in proving this bound is to construct a bad sequence for each policy so you give me your policy p i will construct a bad sequence for this policy p such that the performance of policy p is is at least this much worse than the performance of the optimal policy so we've done two things so far we have a performance characterization of our policy rr and a fundamental lower bound on the performance of any policy so now we'll focus on a specific hosting policy called time to live or ttl ttl policies have been widely studied in caching literature and which is why we decided to study them for our problem as well because our problem on some level is related to the caching problem very briefly this is how ttl works if the service is not hosted at the edge 
and the request arrives. The service is fetched and the timer is set to some number L, some integer L. Following this, in every time slot in which the service is hosted at the edge and we don't have any arrivals, the timer is decremented by one. If a request is received while the service is hosted at the edge, the timer is reset to L. And finally, if the service is, if the service is evicted from the edge, if the timer hits zero. So to summarize, you fetch set a timer to L. Every time you get a request, you reset the timer to L. Every time you don't get a request, you decrement the timer by one. And if the timer ever hits zero, the service is evicted from the edge server. Typically, the value of L is fixed. However, there are variants of TTL which sort of adaptively change the value of L during execution. So we take care of both of these. Our theoretical results focus on the case where L is a constant. And in simulations, we also consider a variant of TTL where L is adaptively changed over time. Our next result characterizes the performance of TTL for a fixed timer value L. Let C TTL and C opt be the cost incurred under TTL and the offline optimal policy. Recall that the offline optimal policy knows the entire arrival sequence a priori. This theorem provides a lower bound on the ratio of cost incurred under TTL and the cost incurred under the offline optimal policy. And the result shows that you fix your value of L, there exists an arrival and rent cost sequence for which the performance of TTL relative to OP is the ratio of that is at least as much as shown on the right hand side of the inequality. You would note that the lower bound deteriorates as the fetch cost M increases, as well as as the edge service constraint kappa increase. So on the next slide, I'll go over a summary of the results for our policy, the fundamental bounds and TTL, just to recap what we've seen so far. So in addition to providing performance guarantees for RR, we also analyze the performance of TTL as well as uh, sort of lower bounds on the performance of any policy. And our results can be summarized as follows. The relative performance of all deterministic online policies deteriorates as the maximum number of requests served at the edge in a time slot, which is kappa, increases. Recall that our benchmark is the offline optimal policy. And compared to the offline optimal policy, the performance of any deterministic online policy deteriorates linearly with kappa. And if you focus on the third column, we look at the dependence of various policies on the fetch cost M. And we conclude that the performance of RR improves as M increases. Intuitively, this is because as M increases, a service fetch is very expensive and therefore both opt and RR tend to have static hosting status and RR if it, uh, mimics opt and therefore it does well. And finally, we note that the performance of TTL actually deteriorates as M increases. And this is because for very large M and in the specific case where the re request traffic is low, both RR and opt don't host the service at all. However, by definition, TTL has to fetch the service every time a request arrives and the service is not hosted. A consequence of this is that TTL pays a large fetch cost multiple times, which leads to poor performance. So this is again not entirely surprising um, that TTL suffers when the fetch cost is high. So, so far we focused on arbitrary arrival and rent cost processes and provided worst case guarantees. Sometimes these worst case guarantees are too pessimistic, especially for typical input processes. And therefore it makes sense to analyze the performance of various policies for typical arrival and rent cost processes. But the challenge in doing this is the definition of typical is very different for different applications. So for example, some services might see almost uniform traffic across time, 
where there might be others that we see periodic variations. So what is typical is typically a difficult question to answer. So we pick one of them. We focus on the case where the arrival and rent cost processes are sort of uniform over time. More specifically, we consider the case where they are IID, independent and identically distributed over time. Our benchmark here is slightly different. We look at the optimal online policy, opt-on. This opt-on policy knows the statistics of the arrival and rent cost processes, but does not know the actual uh, realization. And our next result provides an upper bound on the cost incurred by RR compared to the cost incurred by the online optimal policy or opt-on. We show that for large time horizons, as the perform as uh, the performance of RR approaches the performance of the op optimal offline policy at an exponential rate as M increases. So what I mean to say is as M increases, recall M is the fetch cost, the ratio between the expected cost incurred by RR and the expected cost incurred by opt-on approaches one exponentially. Our next result characterizes the performance of TTL for the same setting. The setting is IID request arrivals, IID rent costs. Ben the benchmark again is the optimal online policy. And we show that the performance of TTL deteriorates as the fetch cost denoted by M increases. So to summarize our analytical results for the IID case, we show that RR performs well in this setting and its performance improves as M increases, whereas TTL performs poorly for large M. Thus, qualitatively, the results are similar to that in the case of arbitrary rent cost and arrival sequences, where we looked at the adversarial setting with the offline optimal policy being the benchmark. So to summarize, we have results both for the setting where the arrival process is arbitrary and where the arrival process is IID stochastic. In both settings, RR performs better as M, which is a fetch cost, increases. I'll now present some simulation results. In this plot, we look at synthetic arrival and rent cost processes and compare the performance of various policies as a function of kappa, which is the edge service constraint. We note that the performance of RR is very close to that of the offline optimal policy. And even as kappa increases, the gap hardly widens. In addition, we also simulate a variant of TTL called TTL online. This was proposed in the reference given in the footnote. And we note that it, it performs OK, but RR still outperforms the TTL online policy. The next set of simulations are trace driven. We took two data sets. There, the links to the data sets are given in the footnote. And we compared the performance of various policies as a function of the fetch cost M. Recall that we expect RR to do better as M increases and TTL to do worse as M increases. And consistent with our analytical results, the performance of RR actually improves and the performance of TTL de deteriorates as M increases. To conclude this part of the talk, this problem focuses on a service which is hosted on cloud servers and can also be hosted on third party edge servers located close to the end users to reduce latency. The algorithmic challenge is to determine how to use third party edge resources to minimize the overall cost incurred by the system. We propose an online policy called RR and show that the performance of RR is good across various arrival and rent cost models. Further, we show that TTL, which is a very widely studied and widely used policy, we show that TTL actually performs poorly for our setting. And following this, we extended the setting to the case where service a service can be partially hosted at the edge. And I'll talk about that in a minute but maybe I'll pause here and see if there are any questions. No, no questions have been posted yet. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has a question, uh, you can maybe unmute yourself and ask. Uh, 
no questions i had a quick question so this ttl online like you from a this time to leave will being order one hmm. change to something else depending hmm. on the current time or something yeah so there are many variants of it what what the variants do is you start with some base value of n okay which which sort of comes with from your hypothesis of what the arrival rate is and as you observe the arrival rate if you infer that arrivals are more frequent than what you thought you can suitably modulate l okay okay but uh, so at no point it kind of scales with the time horizon or anything generally it should no, be all yeah and i mean for like depends on the arrival process really but if it's an iid type arrival process yeah. finally if the arrival rate is more than your average rent cost you typically want l to be very large okay. and so on so for a time varying process sort of non stationary process l can take care of the variations if it's adapted okay okay yeah i don't i'll move on i guess okay so we'll now move to the second part of the talk the setting is very similar but the key novelty in the second part is now we have the option to partially host the service at the edge what this means is a fraction of the database and the code of the service is hosted at the edge and in such cases parts of answers to user queries can be computed at the edge and delivered with low latency and the remaining query is still sent to the cloud for service and which the answer, answer to that part of the query might take a longer duration to get back to the user and the benefit of partial hosting is that it requires lower edge resources and therefore can potentially reduce the rent cost incurred and i'd like to emphasize that many services are naturally suited for partial hosting especially in services that are being designed today because there is this move towards designing services as a collection of independent microservices instead of a monolith and all such services that are designed as collections of microservices are natural candidates for partial hosting so i'll give you a very simple example uh, let's say the service is actually a news website and the data can be stored both at the edge and the cloud one way to use both would be to store the text corresponding to the news articles at the edge and the images and the videos embedded in the article at the cloud in such cases under partial hosting when a user requests for a particular news article the text can be loaded from the edge which will happen quickly and the image and the video can be loaded from the cloud which might take a while to get, reach the user but if the user can start reading while these things load the user's quality of experience might be better because they don't feel like they're waiting for information to arrive even though some of the information arrives with a delay so here again we model the overall cost of service as the cumulative cost incurred uh due to latency in service bandwidth consumption and edge resources formally time is divided into slots for the purposes of this talk i'm limiting myself to the setting where at most one request arrives per time slot this assumption can be relaxed the cost of relaxing this assumption is sort of longer proofs but the same intuitions carry through the most important thing to note here is partial hosting and what happens under partial hosting so when the service is partially hosted the latency cost is a decreasing function of the fraction of the service hosted at the edge specifically if row t is the fraction of the service hosted at the edge in time slot t the latency cost denoted by g of row t is a decreasing function of row t and uh, like before a renting cost of ct units is incurred to host the entire service at the edge in time slot t the cost incurred to host past parts of the service is proportional to the fraction of the service hosted so if you are hosting 
rho t fraction of the service, the cost you will incur is Ct times rho t. On each fetch of the service from the back end to the edge server, a fetch cost of m units is incurred. This involves fetching the database, the code, etc. from the cloud and storing it at the edge. Now, since we allow partial hosting, we may also partially fetch. And the cost incurred to fetch parts of the service from the back end to host on the edge server is proportional to the fraction of the service being fetched. So if rho t minus 1 was the fraction stored in time slot t minus 1 and rho t is the fraction stored in time slot t, then the cost incurred is m times the maximum of 0 and rho t minus rho t minus 1. We've gone through this slide before. I'll just recap it once more, just to make things rigorous. We first have request arrivals. Then these requests will be served at the edge or the cloud. The rent cost for the next time slot will then be announced. And the system will finally make a hosting decision for the next time slot. Recall that the algorithmic challenge is to design a hosting policy which decides when to host the service at the edge to minimize the total cost of service. This total cost includes the fetch, the rent, and the service costs. Hosting decisions can be changed from time slot to time slot based on the request arrival patterns and the rent cost. In addition to this, um, the policy makes hosting decisions based on the fetch cost value and it also knows the latency function g and again here we are looking at online policies because the request arrival process is revealed in a causal manner one of the goals of this part of the talk is to determine if and when partial service hosting can bring down the overall cost and in addition of course we are looking for an online hosting policy which has performance guarantees under minimal assumptions on the arrival and rent cost processes. I'll summarize the main results before going into the details. The main contributions are as follows. We focus on the setting where exactly one intermediate hosting level is feasible. That is, rho t belongs to the set 0, alpha, and 1. 0 means the service is not hosted. 1 means that the service is fully hosted at the edge and alpha means that alpha fraction of the service is hosted at the edge. We characterize the fundamental limits on the performance of any online deterministic policy. In addition, we propose an online hosting policy and pro provide performance guarantees for it. And in, in addition, we characterize the special case this is where partial service hosting is actually used by our policy. Now, just because we have the option to partially host the service doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. So we also characterize when is it useful to actually partially host the service. And like before, we have a trace driven numerical performance evaluations of various policies to compare their performance as well as their performance, the performance, I mean, various fundamental bounds on the performance of any policy. So here is our first result. It characterizes the fundamental limit on the performance of any deterministic online policy. CP is the cost of a candidate policy P. And under some constraints on the rent cost C, we show that there exists a lower limit on the gap between the performance of the offline optimal policy and any deterministic online policy. Recall that the offline optimal policy knows the entire arrival sequence and the online policy only learns the arrival sequence causally. Now, the case where these assumptions made in the theorem are not satisfied, it is straightforward to design a static hosting policy that is optimal and therefore those cases are trivial and excluded from this result. So the key takeaway here is for all non-trivial cases, there is a fundamental lower limit on the performance of any deterministic online policy. Uh, since the policies we consider are deterministic, we can predict how they behave for an input sequence. And the key idea to obtaining a lower bound of this kind is to construct a bad sequence for each policy P. One detailed example is worked out here, but I'll skip discussing it in the interest of time. 
instead i'll spend more time on discussing our dynamic hosting policy this is sort of an extension of rr so what you'll see here are very similar decisions to the way rr decides what to do we call this policy alpha retroactive alpha here it denotes the partial hosting state which is allowed so in each time slot alpha rr evaluates if the current cache status is optimal and if it is not optimal it changes the hosting status so for example consider a case where the service is evicted from the edge at time t evict and not fetched after that up to time t so this gray portion on the uh, time axis indicates that the service was hosted either partially or completely in that time duration so we'll call this option a this is what alpha rr did in this time frame now our policy checks if there exists a time slot tau 1 between t evict and tau such that fetching the full service the entire service at the end of time slot tau minus 1 and hosting it till time t is cheaper than not hosting it at all in the interval t evict to t so the thick red portion on the time axis denotes that the service is fully hosted at the edge in this period we'll call this option b in this case there's, a, there's an option c as well which is that is it beneficial to host the service partially so in option c alpha fraction of the service is hosted from time slot tau 2 to t now what alpha rr does is it checks if option a is the best if option a is the best it does not fetch the service if option b is the best then it fetches and hosts the entire service and if option c is the best it partially hosts the service in the next time slot so this is exactly like rr but instead of just option a and b we now have an option c as well this is the other case where the entire service is fetched at t fetch and not evicted till time slot t this is option a here again we have option b and option c to compare against whichever one is cheaper alpha rr will go with that so here for example in option c from t fetch to tau 2 the entire service is hosted and from tau 2 to t the service is partially hosted at the edge whichever of these gives the lowest cost that is the option that rr goes with i'll skip the third case just in the interest of time the complexity of alpha rr is also order 1 instead of one delta we here need to maintain three deltas their scalars can be updated very easily so alpha rr can also be implemented in an efficient manner now i'll present our analytical results for rr our first result focuses on how alpha rr exploits partial hosting we call that we consider the setting where three hosting levels are possible no hosting complete hosting and hosting alpha fraction of service g alpha is the latency cost at the intermediate level and the latency cost at full hosting is 0 the latency cost at no hosting is 1 respectively one quantity of relevance for this result is the reduction in the latency cost due to partial hosting for our setting 1 minus g alpha is this quantity since by hosting alpha fraction of the service latency cost reduces from 1 to g alpha our first result states that if this reduction in lat latency cost at the intermediate level is less than the fraction of service hosted that is if 1 minus g alpha is less than or equal to alpha then alpha rr does not use partial hosting ever our next result characterizes the performance of alpha rr compared to the offline optimal policy and we note that alpha rr is four optimal that is irrespective of the arrival and rent cost sequences 
cost incurred by alpha rr is at most four times the cost incurred by the offline optimal policy i have a proof sketch uh, i think i'll skip this in the interest of time and go to some simulation results so we compare the performance of alpha rr with rr which was the policy we proposed in the first part of this talk RR and alpha RR actually work on the same principles. It's just that RR is not allowed to host parts of the service. Other bounds or policies we compare against is the offline optimal policy with partial hosting, the offline optimal policy without partial hosting. And we also plot two lower bounds, lower bound with partial hosting and lower bound without partial hosting. And we present both synthetic and trace driven simulations. I'll start with synthetic simulations. For this set of results, the arrival process is Bernoulli. The rent cost process is an ARMA 42 process. Um, the fetch cost and other parameters are given on the slide. We vary the value of G alpha here, which is the latency cost at the intermediate hosting state. We picked the parameter of the Bernoulli process such that the optimal thing to do for all these data points is to actually partially host the service at the edge. And you see that the performance of alpha RR, which is denoted as alpha RR with partial here, is quite close to that of the lower bound with partial hosting for all values of G alpha considered. Further, we see that the performance gap between RR and alpha RR is high when alpha plus G alpha is less than one. And this performance gap vanishes when alpha plus G alpha is greater than or equal to one. What this tells us is, is that the benefit of partial hosting are limited to the setting where alpha plus G alpha is less than one. In this next plot, we vary the value of the fetch cost M the values of the remaining parameters are on the slides and note that this is for the setting where alpha plus g alpha is less than one and we see that the performance gap between alpha rr and the offline optimal policy decreases as m increases this is consistent with our intuition from the first part of the talk and the performance gap of rr and alpha rr is actually significant for all values of m considered this basically highlights the point that alpha plus G alpha is less than one, partial hosting is actually very useful. Now this is the other setting. Here we have alpha plus G alpha greater than one. And we see that here there is literally no difference between the performance of the policies that use partial hosting and those that don't. This again sort of supplements our analytical results that partial hosting is not very useful if alpha plus G alpha is greater than one. I'll briefly present some trace driven simulations. For this set of simulations, we compare the performance of alpha RR with RR, the offline optimal policy with partial hosting and the offline optimal policy without partial hosting. The arrival process was derived from a Google cluster data and we use AWS spot prices to model the rent cost sequence. We see that the performance gap between RR and alpha RR is again high when alpha plus G alpha is less than one. And this gap vanishes when alpha plus G alpha is greater than or equal to one. Again, just to highlight the value of alpha plus G alpha plays a key role in determining if partial hosting is useful in reducing the overall cost incurred by the system. Here again, the same thing as a function of M, we see that the performance gap between RR and alpha RR increases as M increases. So to conclude this part of the talk, we consider the algorithmic challenge of dynamic service hosting at the edge in the setting where the service can also be hosted partially. We proposed a computationally efficient online policy. We call this policy alpha RR. We show that this policy is four optimal. In addition, we show that it uses partial hosting only when alpha plus G alpha is less than one. And it's our conjecture that even beyond alpha RR, benefits of partial hosting are very limited 
if alpha plus d alpha is actually greater than or equal to 1. And I don't have time to get into the details, but we've also explored designing hosting policies for the setting where request arrivals are stochastic with a known distribution. So for example, we've looked at Markovian arrivals as well. I'm almost out of time. So I'll just conclude by saying that we studied the problem of service hosting at the edge. We pro proposed two online policies and showed that both of these policies perform well across various arrival patterns and for various parameters. Uh, most interestingly, we explored the benefits of partial hosting and characterized conditions under which partial hosting is necessary for optimal performance. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions you have. Yeah. Thank you, Sharyu, for this uh, wonderful talk and also for sticking exactly on time. Yeah, it's like perfect timing. Any questions, uh, please post on the chat box or you can unmute yourself and also ask. Yes. Uh... Uh, participants can raise hands if they like to ask a question and uh, we'll facilitate it. Can I, so will it be visible to us if they raise hand? Like uh, I cannot, I'm not sure if it will be visible to me. Maybe post the support team will see. Will, uh, see that post okay. will be able. Ah, oh, there is one question in Q and A. Can any of these policies be used in conjunction with coding? Lalita from IIT Hyderabad. Um, Lalita, I think yes, because uh, I, I'm I'm assuming here you mean coding for computation. Avishek, was that your sense also? I think might be coded caching. I'm not sure. Lalita, are you like like in caching there is this coded sense? Are you mentioning like yeah. in hosting also there is a coded sense like that? Satyajit, is it possible to bring Lalita? Yes, on coded screen? caching. Yeah, yeah. Coded yeah. caching. Okay. Okay. So if it's coded caching, yes, Lalita. For example, if the service is actually a news website and all you're doing is storing information. These things, I think, can be extended to coded caching. We can, what we can do is, uh, instead of a rent cost scalar quantity, we can have a rent cost vector, and talk about using multiple edge servers, and then appropriately store the information on these multiple edge servers to serve user requests. For more complicated services where computation is also involved, I am not very sure if a if an easy extension is possible because I don't know how one computes across edge servers. If it can be decoupled into unrelated computations, again, we could do it. Like a map reduce kind of thing could be done, I think. But for more complex computations, for example, say Google Translate, I don't know how one does Google Translate across multiple servers. That may not be so easy to generalize this to. Sure, sure. Thanks, Sharayu. That was helpful. Thanks, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and to follow thanks up, for the very nice talk. Yeah. Thank you. So, to follow up on Lalita's question, this alpha RR is like, so I think Lalita is mentioning about this coding across different servers or different uh, things. But this alpha RR is also reflecting this different layer of source coding, right? Like yes, code. it is. It is for like example, that. You it's, can it's the equivalent of. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So I was yeah. mentioning it is even for video, like you can say, okay, at, at the age, you will keep the lowest level of the video and will bring up uh, the higher and higher quality as the video keeps running. Uh, that can also be done. Right? Yeah, that, that can be done. Another way I, again, giving the Google Translate example, what one could do is uh, most commonly requested language pairs uh, the database corresponding to those pairs could be hosted at the edge. Uh, my understanding of Google Translate is that it's not really algorithmic. It's a pattern matching exercise. So you could store the database of these commonly used pairs at the edge. So some services get, most services get served at the edge. And then when an uncommon pair is requested, you go to the cloud to get some. 
on a uh, lighter note, is this alpha or published? Like, have you submitted somewhere or published it? So, a conference version of this came out last year in ah, WC. Because I was suggesting not... maybe instead of alpha, you could put small r, then it will be triple r blockbuster. Oh, small r, r, r. <laughs> right, right. Maybe in the <laughs> journal version, we'll do that. So, so when you said computation, where did you mean mm -hmm. caching for computation? So that's what you meant, is it? Or uh, mm -hmm. um, no, I sort of meant that if the service is such that a, a user query comes and then you have to do some computation and the answer is the what the right. user wants, then right. it's a little trickier because you could do sort of distributed computation only if the service allows it. Not all services. Would be right. distributed. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Understood. Uh, I do not see any other questions. Uh, did anyone raise hands? I'm not sure. No. So, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Sharayu and uh, Avishek, uh, for this. Uh, Sharai for talk and Avishek for sharing this session. And I think we had an excellent uh, uh, first day and this is a very good point and very nice talk to end this uh, first day. So um, we, uh, we will uh, so see you tomorrow and uh, we will again have a uh, lined up many nice sessions. So we will, uh, I, I'll give a more detailed minute by minute um, um, timetable or uh, schedule by this night so yeah we can conclude this uh, thank you okay okay uh, thank you. first thank you Sharif for this very nice talk and uh, so and also thanks to the audience for questions and being there and a big thanks to Satyajit for hosting this it's been an excellent first day and I think we are our expectations are higher now for second and third day. So thanks a lot, Satyajit and the IT Monday team for organizing this. And again, thanks to all and especially thanks to Shari. So we can end the session here and how do I end? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thanks.